Hi guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial. This tutorial will be a two-part tutorial. We're going to be creating what is essentially a movie searcher application. The basic features of this application will be the user will input text into a search bar. This search bar will then grab information from an API. The API will then feed that information back to the user, and then the user will be able to star the information or favorite the information. If the user favorites the movie, then the movie goes into a database, and the user will also be able to click a button to see more information about the movie. In this tutorial, we'll make use of the Path Provider plugin, which we already looked at. We're also going to take a look at the SQLite plugin that is available to Dart, and we'll also be using Rx Dart to make this a reactive application. All right, so naturally, because we want those plugins, we need to add them to our PubSpec YAML file. The SQLite plugin for Dart is called SQFlight, and they recommend that you put in the any keyword rather than put in a specific version. The Path Provider plugin we already looked at, 0.3.1 is the current version in this video. And then Rx Dart, which is a implementation of the Rx library in Dart, is currently at 0.16.1. Okay, so now that we have all of our plugins, let's take a look at the boilerplate for this application. We have our main function, which is pointing to our MyApp class. Then our MyApp class is building out a material application with a title of Movie Searcher. And then we've got our theme data making our entire thing dark. And then the home for this material app is our home page widget. Our home page widget is a stateful widget. So we use the create state function to point it towards our home state function. And inside of this, we have a scaffold, a simple app bar with some text that just says movie searcher. And then we have an empty container for the body. The first thing I like to do with any application is take a look at the data that we're going to be using. So here inside of Postman is an example of the API that we're using. This allows us to query different movies by putting in words and letters. In this case, I just put in A. So it's trying to find any movie with A in its title. And of course, you can see here we have multiple different movies. All of them have A inside of their titles. The important fields in this API are the title field, the poster path, the overview, and the ID. These are the fields that we're going to bring into our application. Now let's build out our model. And for our model, I'm just going to create a new folder called model, and then a file called model.dart. Inside of this file, I want to create a class called movie, and I also want to make an import on meta backslash meta.dart. And this gives us access to some meta programming keywords that we'll use inside of this class. The four fields that we want to bring from our API will be our title, our poster path, our ID, and our overview. And of course, we want to put this into the constructor for our movie. We also want to add a Boolean to the end, which will be called this.favored. And this will be a Boolean that we can use to check to see if the user wants to put the movie into the database. We can then annotate our four API fields with required. And this makes it so that they are required to instantiate a movie. And we don't need favor to be required because it's something that we're going to be dealing with internally. Just a note on dark constructors because I've noticed that there's been a little bit of confusion surrounding this. So when we put curly brackets inside of the constructor like this, it makes it so that the values surrounded by the curly brackets our quote-unquote optional values. However, it also gives us access to the named parameters. I can type in title colon and then pass in the title that I want. And I can do this for all of the fields that are surrounded by these curly brackets. If I remove these curly brackets, however, now there's an error. Named parameter title isn't defined. And that's because all of the parameters are now positional. So by having these curly braces, we can use these as named arguments and by annotating them as required, we're saying, okay, well, these are required, but we also want to be able to name these arguments. 
All right, so now we want to create a from JSON method for this class. This takes in a map, and then it allows us to then convert the JSON object into movie objects. So we take our title, and then we get the title key from our JSON. We do the same for our poster path, our ID, and our overview. For our ID, because it is a integer by default, we need to convert it into a string before putting it into our movie. And then we want favored to be false by default. So we'll just put it in as false. Now we can come back into our main file and we can import the model that we just created by typing in package movie app, which is the name of this application, then model, and then model dart. We also want to make imports for rxdart. So this is just package rxdart backslash rxdart.dart. Then we want to make import for HTTP and then we'll alias this as HTTP. And then we want Dart convert because we're going to be converting our data from JSON. Next, I'm going to put our API key at the top as a constant. Now, because this API key is private, I'm not going to include it, but you can sign up for this API very easily. If you guys are following along, you just go to the website of the API and then you can sign up and get your own key. Down inside of our home state class, we want to create two global variables. One will be a list of our movies. And then we want to have a Boolean called has loaded. And this will be a Boolean that basically signifies whether or not the movies have been loaded yet. And actually I want has loaded to be set to true by default. Now because we're using rxdart, we want to create what's called a publish subject. This is essentially just a stream controller, except it has one major difference. And that is that it returns an observable object rather than a stream. What this essentially means for us is that we can listen in on this publish subject with multiple different listeners, and then we can also use the result of it in a different way. We want to override our void dispose function, and we want to call subject.close so that we close our stream when this widget gets disposed of. And we also want to override our init state function, and we'll set up our subject here in a moment. But first, let's set up our layout. So our basic layout will be our container. We'll give it some padding. And then inside of it, we'll have a column. The column will have some children. The first child in this column will be our text field. And inside of this text field, we want to have an unchanged event. The unchanged event is when the user types in anything into the text field. We then get that string and we call our subject stream and then we call dot add and we pass that string into our subject. This makes it so that we can call our API after the user has typed in anything. Next, we want to check to see if has loaded is true. If it is, we return a container. Otherwise, we return a circular progress indicator. And this is just basically a spinning animated little half circle thing that shows that the widget is loading. So while our has loaded boolean is set to true, we're just displaying an empty container. Otherwise, we're displaying this little circular loader. Then below all of this, we'll just create an expanded. And then inside of that, we'll give it a list view dot builder. We'll give this list view some padding. The item count for this list view will be based on the amount of movies that we have in here. For now, we'll have our item builder point towards an empty container, but we're going to build another widget for this particular part of the layout. Okay, so now let's go back up here and let's set up our subject so that it's working properly. We come up into our init state function and then we can call subject.stream.debounce and in our debounce, we want to pass in a duration. This will be milliseconds 400 for me, but you can, you can make it whatever you want. And then we want to listen on our stream with a function that we'll create called search movies. Now this debounce method allows us to create an observable that has some latency on when it can send data through the stream. This debounce observable allows us to specify a time lag between when the user makes the call to the API and when the data shows up in the view. So when the user types in a query into the text box, the list view will not pop up until after 400 milliseconds, which will give our application time to populate the list view. All right, so now let's create our search movies function. We want to pass in a query and we want to check to see if our query is empty. 
If it is empty, then we want to call set state and we want to change our has loaded to true. So if the user hasn't typed anything into the box yet, we'll make it so that it's just showing an empty container rather than the circular loading indicator. We also want to create a simple helper function called reset movies. This just calls set state and then on our movies list, we call clear and this clears out the list so that it's completely empty. We can call this reset movies function at the top of our search movies function so that it properly resets the list every single time we go to query for movies. If the query is not empty, then we want to set our state for has loaded to false. This way it will show the circular progress indicator. And then below it, we want to call our HTTP get on our API with our API key and the query inside of it. Then we want to pull out our response and then just get the response body. Then we're going to decode it. So we want to decode it from JSON. If you look at the JSON structure, we have this results list and this has all of the lists of movies inside of it. So that's the part that we want. So that's what this part of our function is doing. We're just getting the results from our response and then we're getting our movies list and we're passing it in. And then for each of the items inside of our movies list, we're calling this add movie function, which we have yet to create. Then finally, we want to set the state of our has loaded variable to true. Now for our add movie function, all we're doing is we're taking in each of our iterative items and then we're calling set state and we're going movies.add and then we're taking each of those items and we're passing them through our movie from JSON function. This will create a bunch of movies objects which will then be pushed into our movies list. We do also want to have an error catcher and we can use a simple error catcher that just resets our has loaded state to true if there is an error. So this will get rid of the circular progress bar if there is an error. Now, if we want to see the movies being pushed into our application, we can create a simple print statement and we can take our movies list and then we can map this function here onto each of the items of our movies list. So we take an item out and then we just get the items title. And so if we load up our application, you can see here we have our input box. And if I just type in a random letter, you can see all of the movies being added into our list. All right, so now that we have all of the logic for our API and everything, let's create the widget that we want to use to display our items. We'll call this new widget movie view. And of course it will be a stateful widget. For our movie view, we of course want to pass in each of the movies. So we want to say movie view this dot movie, and then we want to create a final type movie movie variable. And then of course we want to override the create state function and point it towards movie view state. Inside of movie view state, we want to create a movie state variable, and this will hold all of the state for this particular movie. Remember that we're using a list builder, which iterates through the list that we're passing into it. So this widget will have multiple instances of itself and each one will be assigned to a particular movie class. We can make things easier on ourselves by overriding our init state function and then taking movie state and assigning it to widget.movie. And this will make it so that we do not have to write widget.movie every single time we want to access our data. The build function for this widget will return a card and inside of our card we'll have a container with a height of 200. We'll give it some padding and then we'll put a row inside of it. We'll have a ternary operator and that will check to see if our movie state dot poster path is equal to null or not. And if it's not equal to null, then we want to create a new hero widget. Our hero widget will have a child of image dot network and we can get our images by going to this link and then putting in our movie state poster path. And then our hero animation will have a tag which will be our movie state dot ID. Now, if movie state poster path is null, then we'll just return an empty container. And the reason we're doing this is because not all of the movies from this API do have a poster path. If we want to take a look and see what this looks like currently, we can come back up to our list view builder. And instead of returning an empty container, we can return a movie view. 
and we can pass in movies and the index. Now if I search out say R, we get a bunch of movie posters on our cards. And you can see here, here's actually one that doesn't have a movie poster. After our movie poster, we want to create an expanded. And inside of our expanded, we want to create a stack. Inside of our stack, the first child will be in a line. And we'll use alignment.center. We'll give our alignment a child of padding. And then we'll give that a child of text, which will have our movie state.title. And to make sure that our title does not go off the card, we'll give it max lines of 10. So now if we load up our application, you can see that we have our titles next to our movie posters. And even for the one that doesn't have the movie poster, it's relatively centered, though we could push it further to the right by doing something with the empty container. After the first align, we'll have another align. We'll align this with our top right, and the child of it will be a icon button. So it's an icon that acts like a button. Our icon will be based on our movie state.favored. So we'll check to see if the movie state.favored is true. If it is, then we want it to be icons.star. Otherwise, we want it to be icons.star border. So star is just like a filled in star, where a star border is just the border of the star. And we'll make the icon white. For today, the on pressed event will just be an empty anonymous function. And you can see this just puts a star in the top right of each of the cards. And if we click on it, you can see it acts like a button, but of course it has no functionality yet. Then finally, we want to create another align. And this one will be aligned with our bottom right. We'll have the child be an icon button again. And this one will be an arrow downward. And of course we also want it to be white so it shows up. And then the on pressed for this will also be empty. So here you can see now we have this arrow that points downwards. When the user pushes it, it will open the card up and we'll be able to see the overview. So this is functionality that we'll add in the next tutorial, just like the favorites button is also functionality that we'll add in the next tutorial. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.